Hello everyone, my name is Richard. I'm going to be performing the monologue Blocked Out Sun by Wes Williams. Enjoy! And the character's called Philip, by the way. <laughs> it's, it, it's... It's difficult being here. You know, talking like this in front of everyone. <laughs> Nothing against you guys, but Melina said that today, well, they have to share something personal, you know, personal, like, with all of you. Anyway, here I am, sharing it all with you. Right. I went round to my mum's the other weekend, um, for a Sunday roast. Oh, she does the best roasts. Really old school, you know what I mean? <laughs> and my, my brothers were there, and my little niece, our Fiona. I yeah, put my eye that one. It was my mum's birthday, the big six so, so we all clubbed together and got her a weekend trip to Lourdes for the for next Easter. My mum, she, <laughs> she's dead religious. She was over the moon. She's only been there once when she was a teenager, and it had always been her dream to go back one of these days. My brother Michael... <laughs> That's Fiona's dad. I brought mum a lovely bunch of roses and a big box of Thornton's Continental Duck Selection, her old time favourites. And our Terry had given her a new rosary in his white satin covered box with a picture of the Pope on its front. And I got her a new kindle because, um, because the old one ended up in the washing machine on a high temperature wash and a quick spin. Don't ask, just don't. It's a long story. Don't, don't ask. <sighs> She said she was one of the luckiest mothers in the whole wide world. The luckiest mother in the whole wide world. Three beautiful sons and one gorgeous granddaughter, she said. Group hugs, you know. That sort of thing. Everyone playing happy families. I felt... I felt sick to my stomach, though. Because I knew what was going to happen. I knew... What I was about to tell them. Anyway, oh, <laughs> Fiona wouldn't leave me alone all bloody afternoon. She wanted to play Sp Spyro's Pace Adventures on her PlayStation 4. So we said a good hour slashing some good old pixies and mad evil punk wizards. While mum and brothers would watch Man United on the television in the kitchen. <laughs> Typical. I wanted Fiona to, to go out to see her best friend Carly who lives next door. Or, or escape upstairs and watch some Disney Princess Blu-rays or something like that. I just didn't want her around when, when I was going to talk to my family. Didn't want her to get upset. Because I knew she would. So it finally came to an end. Man United lost by 3 2. Brothers weren't happy. And Fiona decided that she would escape the land of adults and enjoy some quality time with her blurries upstairs. Thank God. <sighs> So Terry opened another bottle of sparkling wine, and Mum, Mum opened her box of dark continentals. She passed them around. I was trying to avoid the soft centers. They make me want to puke, especially the strawberry creams and those fucking coffee things. Jesus Christ. Anyway, there, there wasn't really much conversation, mainly because of Man United's poor performance. And what the fuck was the manager doing? I just sat there and smiled and. Try to join in, but I'm not a big football fan. I've, 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 never, I've, I've never been. Suddenly, I knew it was time. Time for them to know. And I just came out with it during a lull in their fucking footy analysis. So I'm HIV positive. I said. There. It was out. The elephant was fine in the room, as they say. They just stared at me. You cut through the atmosphere like with a knife. It was terrible. 
I also thought I was going to shit myself. I was trembling. It was really bad. I looked at their blank expressions and... They had numb, empty, frozen faces like those masks you see in horror films. I felt sick and dizzy and fucked off all at the same time. But this was something I was planning on doing for ages. I know, I know it was very bad timing, especially on my mum's birthday, but I, I couldn't, I wouldn't hold back. Not now, they needed to know, the sooner the better. When it all sank in and I was just sitting there in silence and... Both Michael and Terry went to these red screaming, raging, these red rages screaming and accusing me of being a dirty little queer tramp fucker. And my mum just crying, crying, she just wouldn't look at me. She just, she just wouldn't look at me. That ripped me apart. It really did. The one person I love so much in this one fucking scrappy world. I told her something and I, I, I told her something she didn't want to hear. I stood and I said it's probably best if I leave. How could you do this on Mum's special day? Asked Terry. I just stood there and said nothing. I didn't know what to say. I really didn't. Just look at her, Philly. She... Look what you've fucking done. Yeah, Michael. I'm sorry, Mum. I said. She looked up, but her eyes were wet and shiny. So you've got AIDS, Philly. Is that what you're telling us? She asked me. No, no. I said, it's just a virus that can lead on to AIDS. I'm healthy otherwise. I'm, health I'm healthy otherwise. It's not like it was in the old days. It, it can be treated. Yeah, and I'm a multi-fucking millionaire, sneered Terry. Where did you get it, this AIDS? She asked. didn't reply. I, I knew that was only my business and no one else's. Well, they wanted answers. Well, I couldn't give them. I didn't want to give them. Now, now was my turn to be one of those masks with the frozen numb faces. Suddenly my, my two brothers stood up and, and, and towered over me, snarling angry but also looking fearful and lost and sad. In the meantime, Fiona had run downstairs. She'd heard the tale and the raised voices. I looked at her and she was crying. She's a bright kid for a ten-year-old. She knows what's what. I can't believe you brought this to our door, Philip. My mum said. I was shocked at that. And then she... And then she delivered the... The killer blow. What will the neighbours think? I stood there and looked at her. Shake, shaking my head. Shaking my head and starting to cry. And I just wanted my family to be, to be with me. It wasn't a lot to ask, was it? I didn't even follow what the neighbours thought. It's not a big deal, I said. And then I realised it was probably the worst thing I could have said. A queer little brother with AIDS. Not a big deal. You're joking, mate. Said Michael. He poked me with a hard, with a hard accusatory finger to the chest. Stumbled back. Fiona sh behind me shouted, Leave my Uncle Philly alone! Michael had always bullied me. Him being the oldest and me being the youngest. He'd never been happy with me being gay. In fact, none of them happy about it. It had never been spoken about. Even my dad was alive. It was and always would be a taboo subject. Like locking the lunatic brother in attic and throw away the fucking key. Don't talk about him, we weren't asked. You never know, it might go away of its own accord. It's just a phase. 
Little Philly just kidding us. The baby, the family looking for attention. Looking for attention. And it wasn't about attention. It was about me being, being who I really was. It was about being me. How long have you known about the HIV? Asked Terry. He had calmed down and now showed some concern and even more confusion. I could see he was hurting. There was nothing I could do about it. A few weeks ago I said, everyone went quiet. I looked for confusion. It was, it was, it was poisoning the air. And you're just telling us now, are you? said Michael angrily. It was like one of those classic standoff situations, but suddenly the word just came out. I'm not a fucking leper, you know, I almost yelled. I'm still Philly and you're still my family. How could you hurt mum like that, Philly? Said, said Michael. I could hear Fiona crying softly behind me. This is what I didn't want to happen. Out of everyone in the family, Fiona was the least person I wanted to upset. She couldn't fully understand. She could only hear and see the hurt, the accusations, the anger in her father's voice, the dry tears on my mum's face. It was breaking my heart, it really was. I'm going. I said, I really can't deal with this. I, I really can't. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. No one stopped me. They didn't look at me. They, they faced the other way. They actually physically turned their backs. Even Terry. I grabbed my jacket and walked out of the room. I heard the hushed voices behind me and my mum softly crying. I began to tremble. I felt like shit. I sort of all gone wrong. So very wrong. I, I hadn't thought about their feelings at all. I was being selfish. It was all about me and my life. I wasn't even thinking about how my news would impact upon their lives. So fucking selfish. Their dismissal, their turn backs. Oh, they were the least I could expect. The, the only response they could afford to give me. I, I deserved it, probably more. But you see, I needed them so much. I didn't have anyone else. There was, there was no one there. I needed our Terry, our, our Michael, our little Fiona. My mum. I needed my mum. Uncle Philly? Come. Came the voice behind me. I turned and saw that Fiona had followed me into the kitchen. We stared at each other. My heart already broken into a tiny, into a thousand tiny pieces. I didn't know what to expect with to expect from her. And she suddenly held her arms out and ran to me. She hugged me so hard I couldn't stop myself crying, like a big soft lad. She looked at me and she was smiling and crying at the same time. I love you, Uncle Philly. You're my best friend, and you'll always be my best friend, she said. I tried to be focused. I tried to be the adult in all of this, but I held on to her as if she were a life jacket, and I didn't want to sink into my own self-pity. I didn't want to sink into my own self-pity and self-hatred. Oh, I'll look after you, Uncle Philly. You're my best friend, and you don't have to worry anymore. I know Dad and Uncle Terry and Nana will as well. And and if they don't, I, I, I won't ever, 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 ever speak to them again. Honest to God, promise, I won't. Those were her exact words. We stood there in the kitchen hugging each other. My eyes closed and full of tears. I wasn't aware that my mum and my two brothers were standing in the doorway watching me and Fiona. Come back, said Michael, my big brother. Come back in Philip. Mum was still crying, but she was smiling and nodding and 
So many emotions written on her face. Holding Fiona's tiny hand up, I followed them into the living room. And that's what happened to me last week. Seems like ages ago. Seems like someone else's story. But I think it's the start of my story. Start of my journey, you know. M Marlena said some, some, she said some really interesting, f she said some really interesting things a few weeks back. Just after I got my results from the test. She said that whenever we get some bad news, we, we go into this state of denial. It, it, you know, it's not happening to me. It only happens to other people, that sort of thing. And, and, and she was right. I was keeping things back from other people. The people I cared about the most. Not because I wanted to protect them. It, it, it was to protect me. I was blocking out the sun. Marlena said. Not letting others in. Not letting others, not letting anyone see who I really was, who, who I am. Everything's good now. Like I said to you, my, my journey begins today.